Okay, hi, welcome. Um, today, I haven't had anybody show up yet asking for some questions. Um, I've been planning on going over the assignment six on the quick sort a bit, maybe. Um, but yeah, as usual, if you're watching this video after the fact, you know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, if, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me, email the, your questions to me um, about the assignment or about the quiz or about our materials this week. So this is kind of an important week, although we got interrupted here. Um, so, um, um, you know, so I, I do encourage you to make use of some of the supplementary videos and materials that I've also linked to in our class uh, website um, about algorithmic complexity and analysis of algorithms and, and uh, those kinds of things. So it'd be very helpful for you. It's kind of a, a big goal of this class is to, you know, introduce you to the basics of those and and um uh, and learn kind of those topics uh but like i said uh, maybe uh, i had i was planning on kind of maybe going by, through by hand um uh an example of uh, of the quick sort right so it would be useful for everybody to understand uh the quick sort and how it works um and, and to, to um, and to maybe, you know, so for example, you might have a question on a task where I ask you to show me the results of, of the quick sort at different stages and things. So um, anyway, so, so let's, uh, so for your assignment six, you're supposed to be writing four functions. So the first one is just a function to swap particular values, you know, so if I give you the values, uh, the indexes three and six um, to the, the swap list values, and, and this list of items. So this is supposed to be my, my a list of integers. Um, it's unsorted currently, um, and uh, we've got the val the, the the values at the top there are the indexes. So there, there's actually seven values in this list. Um, so we have the values in the indexes zero through six in this in this array basically, right? So yeah, if you were swapping, if I if I gave three and six for the swap list values, it should you should swap the five and the six okay so you know the, the swap list values is just supposed to be kind of a bit of a warm-up function uh, but you are supposed to be reusing that function so if, for example the the find and swap pivot so if i if i to initially if we start off with this whole list to find and swap the pivot um the 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 you would pass in a left of zero and and a right of um of six for the whole list here um and then you would calculate the, the mid value. Um, so the way you're supposed to do that is to, to add those together and divide by two. Um, that will tell you that, that our midpoint value is gonna be three. So we're gonna use six to be our um, pivot, right? And then what your find and swap pivot is supposed to do is calculate what the pivot value is by just basically choosing what happens to be the middle value in the middle of your list. And then swapping that to be into the last index. So, so find and swap pivot should call your swap list values function um, to, to put what we're gonna be using as the pivot um, at the last index in the array, okay? And then uh, after that, the uh, partition list. Um, so I'm gonna mostly be showing you using the partition list, right? Partition list um, function here, right? So partition list takes the, the list of values and the left and the right. So in this case, we would pass it in a left of zero and a right of five. That's that's the portion that's unsorted with the pivot is now index six. And we, we would pass in six as the pivot for the fourth parameter for partition list. So what partition list does is, you know, if we start with a left um, of zero and a right of index five here, Basically, you search uh, starting on your left until you find a value that's bigger than the pivot um, and, and strictly greater than. And you should search from the left, from the right down for values that are less than or equal to. Okay. So it is important to, for one of these to be strictly, you should be using searching on the left, I believe, if I remember right. Um, you know, you want to stop at a value that's greater than the pivot, so greater than six in this case. But when you're going down from the left, you, uh, I don't have an example of a value equal to or pivot here because all the values are unique, but you want to, you want to test less than or equal to um, and, and stop um, at, at an equal to if, if you find it um, going down from the right, for example, right? Um, so here, um, I mean, our left would stop immediately because eight is greater than the pivot. 
But um, then when we're searching down from the, the right uh, and decrementing, um, we want to skip over values that are, you know, we want to stop at the first value that's less than or equal to the pivot. So we would skip over the seven uh, and the nine, and we would stop at, at five here because that's less than the pivot. Okay. And then we would swap those two, right? So the, um, the, uh, the, the eight and the five would get swapped here. So notice, you know, conceptually, th th this is the kind of the hardest function to implement um, for this assignment, the partition list. So conceptually, what's going to happen is we're not sorting the list, but when we're done with this, all the values that are greater than the pivot should end up on the right hand side, and all the values that are um, less than or equal to, to the pivot should end up um, over here uh, to the left part of the original list, right? Um, so we would continue on, although we are pretty much the partition now, but, but we would continue on. So we would um, search up um, from here till we find a value that's greater than six. So we'd skip over the one, skip over the two, and we'd stop at index three. Um, and at that point, um, um, you know that um, um, when right and left cross, that's, that's basically your stopping condition. So when that has happened, uh, you know that that is the location of, of the value that you want to swap with your pivot because all the values to, to, to the left of where L ends up should be strictly less than the pivot value. And, and then this is the first value that's greater than or equal to the pivot value where, where the left is here. So even if I did, um, you know, so, so you could have a check that stops right immediately when they swap, but um, it's fine also if, if you decrement, in this case, you would decrement your right, then it would actually go, um, you got to be careful that you can't decrement forever, right? So you shouldn't decrement once you get below zero, but um, but wherever the left ends up, that's going to be the the, um, the critical part, okay? So then the very last thing you're supposed to do for the partition list um, is to then swap um, where this ends up being at uh, index three in this case with the um, um, value. Um, so, um, uh, or actually, I suspect that the way I wrote it in the assignment. So, sorry for pausing that. Is, is you're actually just supposed to return that in that that value um, where the 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 pivot ended up being. So, this is the index. Uh, once you swap the pivot in there, it's going to be at its correct location. So, so you actually, every time you do this, you actually do put one value, the pivot value, to its ultimately correct location on the sorted list, right? Because uh, now that we know that, that index three is this pivot point, when we swap six with eight uh, here, uh, we know that everything to the right is going to be greater than or equal to the pivot value six, and everything to the left is going to be less than. So that me must mean that that's the location where six is supposed to go, okay? So, but like I said, you're supposed to, to just return index three as the, 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 uh, um, pivot index that you found. And then I think after you return from calling the partition list, then you do this actual swap and, and you get the, um, the six here and then the eight, all right? So then what you do for quick sort, um, so the other thing is we're returning index three. So that means we're gonna call partition list again then on the indexes from zero to two. So we're gonna first do find and swap pivot for uh, these values five, one, and two from index zero, one, and two. And then we're gonna call it uh, recursively on these values um, that were, uh, you know, this, the pivot index that returned plus one. So on the values four, five, and six, which have nine, seven, and eight in there, okay? So again, um, just to, I, I, I won't spend as much time on these, but so when you call um, find and swap pivot, the mid value here is one. So we're gonna end up using one, um, as our pivot value. And then when we call um, partition list, you know, we, we start the, the left over here and we start the right here. Um, and um, I mean, five is greater than um, uh, one, but uh, two is also greater than one. So, um, 
what we will end up doing is uh, so, so left we wouldn't move, but but um, um, since since this is greater than one, we would move our right to here, right? Um, and then at this point, um, you know, these have crossed. So you know, if you swap zero with zero, five would stay there, and then we, we would just return the that our pivot index was zero. Okay, so we would swap one and two. So again, you know, th this marks the location where all the values. Um, to the right of that should be greater than or equal to the pivot value that we were using, which they are, and, and everything to the left should be less than, but there was nothing to the left in this case. So when we return from this, um, we would swap our pivot value, which was one, into its correct location, right? Um, and then um, we would end up calling um, quick sort again on this portion, although it's this portion is now sorted as well, but um, we wouldn't know that um, until we call quick sort now. But coming back to this, we'd have to do the same thing here. So the mid value is seven. Um, so when we call the uh, find and swap pivot, uh, we would be using um, this for pivot here, seven. Um, and then we would hit use our left and our right. Um, and we would stop right here because nine is greater than seven, but our, you know, the same thing happened here um, that has happened for the, the lower portion. So, so the right would get decremented. We wouldn't actually end up swapping anything because right and left would be pointing to the same place. Um, and then we would return with our pivot index being four um, and we would swap seven into um, its correct position in the list, okay? So at this point, um, actually our list is sorted because six is, is in index three here that, that was put into the, the correct location from the very first when we called the um, partition list on the whole list, right? Um, at this point though, we would end up, um, you know, we would call, um, since our pivot index was uh, zero, um, we would call, uh, a quick sort again on the list from zero to zero, and that list is of size one, so we would conclude that was sorted. And then we would call it on the list from one to two, um, and then we would do the whole thing. So we'd do the find and swap pivot. So if two and one, the midpoint is three divided by two is 1.5, so we would use two, um, and, and we would uh, swap it over to here. Um, but then when we did left and right, we, we would find out that index one is the pivot point and we would turn that back and, and we would swap the two back there. So a little bit of unnecessary work gets done here. But at that point, you know, we, we would show that one ended up being our pivot point. And then when we called recursively again, um, all the all the, the, the list sizes are down to size one, right? So that's our base case for the recursive quick sort, right? And the same thing kind of happens um, over here, okay? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I encourage you to, to think about that and do that by hand, maybe try some slightly uh, more complex examples than this, you know, be good practice for, for example, questions on the test, I might ask you to show, you know, quick sort like that um, by hand, for example. Um, in this case, probably the, the, to me, the most important thing to realize is that like, like when we did the first partition list over the whole list, the result is, is that you know, we're not sorting it during the partition list, but we're getting all the values less than the pivot on one side, all the values greater than or equal to the pivot on the other side. And then that guarantees that when we swap the pivot back to the index that we located as that, you know, that we identify as that pivot point, that that one value will be then in its correct place because everything to the right of it will be greater and equal to it. Everything to the left of it will be less than that, right? So that, that implies that that value is now in its correct position. And if you keep doing that recursively, you know, calling the find and swap pivot and the partition list um, for the things to the left and the right, um, um, the, the same thing will happen on these smaller and smaller sub lists. And, and every time you do that, uh, one value will be guaranteed to be put into its correct um, location um, as a result of doing your partition list, okay? All right, so anyway, so that's kind of a quick thing, um, quick discussion about how quicksort works. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about that, let me know while you're implementing these I gave. Um, I gave um, 
let me show. I gave, you know, I gave algorithms for both the pivot list um, and the quick sort in the assignment description, right? So um, the, the, the quick sort algorithm is kind of described first here, um, but, but then here's the algorithm for the um, partition list, right? So basically you start with left at, at you know, the, the beginning of the list and right at the end. So you need to do a learning, linear search from the left. Um, uh, so I guess I had that backwards. So what, I'm, what I was describing is you should search for greater than or equal to um, when you're going from the left-hand side and do strictly less than from the right-hand side, okay? So you, you should probably do it the way I describe in the algorithm. Uh, if, you, if you don't do it like this, then um, there might be one or two of the tests cases. I mean, you could still get a correctly working partition list, but um, um, one or two of the test cases is assuming that you're using greater than equal to for the linear search from the left up and strictly less than for the right down, right? So anyway, yeah, you, you do your search from the left up and the right down, and then, then every time you swap, you stop, you swap your left and the right, and you keep doing that until left and right cross, right? And then the location uh, where that ends up crossing ends up being the return pivot location that, that you're supposed to return from this one. Right? And then qu the quick sort conceptually then is a recursive algorithm, but it's pretty simple if you've correctly implemented, you know, the um, um, the uh, the find swap. Sorry, if you've correctly implemented all three of these previous functions, the the swap list values, the find and swap pivot. In the partition list, right? So um, for quick sort, your base case is that if the size of the list is zero or one, um, you just return. So by definition, a list that's empty or a list of size one is sorted, right? Um, if not, uh, you call the, um, um, you should be reusing the, um, um, second function to choose the pivot value and that, and that second function should be doing the swap for you to swap the the, um, the value that you choose for the pivot to the end right uh, and then you should also be calling your partition list um, on the list from the left to the right minus one right here as is described here and then um, partition list is going to be returning back the um, the position, um, so you, then you swap that the, the 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 actual pivot value to its correct position k, which gets returned by that, and then you recursively call quick sort on the list list from left to the k minus one. So if if k is returned as the pivot location, then you recursively quick sort from left to k minus one, and quick sort from k plus one to the right, right, the sum portions. Um, okay, so that was all I was going to kind of talk about. Uh, just quickly, a few things about quick sorts. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and uh, hopefully, everybody survived our um, weather event and you've got your power back and everything. Um, so, uh, keep working on your assignments and quizzes um, for this week, and I will see you later.